On today's Tech Talk, we meet the man who wants to connect the world with light. So it's a pleasure to have you on Tech Talk. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Okay, we are here at the Cermat Summit. You are here, obviously, to talk about your technology connecting the world with light. What is the message for the audience here? The message is that we could not um, continue to push new technologies to the market without thinking about uh, if they are, these technologies are really useful or not. So what I want people here to understand is that technology like Li-Fi could be really useful for people, for example, for preventing to install new radio waves antenna to increase the bandwidth in order to be sure that all people is connected and so on. Okay, and you are together here today with uh, Etan from Ellipse. Uh, I'm currently chairman of a company called, uh, named Erganeo. So we are a specific investment fund, so we uh, invest, we, we check for technology inside academic research labs and, and, and then bring them to the market. So we uh, make a lot of partnership with existing companies or even we create in new companies but also partnership with existing companies and uh, with LiFi for example I made a partnership with Ellipse Smart Solution that Ethan represents uh, here. Okay and you guys are, are here to together so you bring the technology and you're also an investor then. Exactly, yeah. In technology. And your role is? Well, we basically then take that technology and bring that to the market. So we've taken an, an ID, a concept that has proved itself, um, especially in, in contained environments. And then we basically take that and look at it and see, okay, so how can we now apply that to the market? Okay. What's out there that's necessary? What can we do with it? So that's how it, the relay works. Okay, so I will get back to you on the business model in just a moment, but I want to return to the, the heart and soul, I think, of, of what you're doing, which is your technology. Now, this is not necessarily a new technology, but what made you bring it to the forefront? Um, of course, sending information with light is not new. Uh, even when you use a torch lamp and make code, Morse code, optical Morse code, you, you already send information. What is new and what in terms, in terms of time to market is better now is that the light is, uh, you have in your home is changing for a new kind of light called LED light. Mm -hmm. And LEDs have the capacity to switch on and off very, very, very quickly, more than 10,000, even 10 million times per second. So. If you consider that all the data you have on internet, video, uh, documents, and so on, in reality, if you look inside them, it's only a series of zero and one. So this is called binary code. So what we have developed is a specific uh, components uh, that will read this video and will transform this video into a series of zero one, send it to the LED lamp, and the LED lamp will switch on and off very, very quickly to send the information to your smartphone, for example. Okay. Of course, your eyes could not see this blinking, but your smartphone, your laptop will see them, and so it, it, it will re rebuild the uh, video of the information. So hence, you can connect any device to internet just using uh, LED light. Wow, I mean that that sounds so. Um, it's. I mean, I know you said that it's, it's not a necessarily a new technology, but it sounds so out of the box. Yet yeah, it sounds so simple. In fact, it's not so simple. I can't imagine. I simplify it. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. But 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 the idea is how how will my how will my life be different with this? For example, as a smartphone user, as a laptop user, as a person that uses power. Yeah, in, in fact, you have light everywhere. Okay, it's if tomorrow you install, I don't know, new Wi-Fi beacons to get connected everywhere, you will increase the uh, uh, power consumption. So the idea is to say we have light everywhere now. Light is LEDs, and LED, LEDs have the capacity to send messages. So we will use this network, these existing networks, instead of creating a, creating a new one, 
to communicate, to send information. So as you have light everywhere, of course, you, you will have connection everywhere. So and now we're thinking, now if we push forward a little bit, we think on 5G, how, how is this going to, what role is this going to play there? Okay. Or could so, it play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, the main challenge for 5G technologies is that in order to deploy this technology uh, in, in this city, for example, or in any cities, you need to install 10 times more antennas. And each antenna will consume 10 times more power than 4G, for example. Mm -hmm. Just imagine the growth exponential of energy consumption and also and to install 10 times more antenna will be difficult because people start to be a little bit afraid about yes all i mean in antennas. switzerland there's been a big discussion about exactly, this exactly yeah mm -hmm. so i met the 5g uh, standardization group and i said why you want to install 10 times more antennas you have light everywhere just use this light has a way to send 5g communication they say yes, so we worked together since four years. Who are you working with? 5G PPP, European 5G PPP uh, Standardization Committee. Okay, okay, so you're working on, on, on that level. Are you yeah. working with any specific companies already with this? Oh, or? In, inside this uh, group, uh, there's a lot of uh, companies working also to, to, to develop the standard, the 5G standard. So yes. Of course, Ericsson and so on. So. Sounds like a logical idea it sounds like a good one how how does it look when you go into a room and and talk to new investors and, and potential partners yeah, how receptive are they uh, so, so i think you know if you, as you've just said it sounds logical it actually really is and it absolutely makes sense so an investor who understands something that absolutely makes sense and that that's most likely the direction a lot of things are moving into mm -hmm. if they also have the let's say, the appetite to sit through this, through this cycle, because we're really at the very beginning of that innovation cycle. We're really here still talking to early adopters in a lot of cases. An investor who understands that uh, loves it, obviously. Um, companies that um, are struggling with connectivity, mm -hmm. uh, with limited bandwidth, or maybe even too much radio frequency in environments where that's not desirable. Think about your, um, some in industrial plants, hospitals, um, schools even, right? Okay. And there's a lot of uh, talk about legislation in schools and radio frequency. These companies that kind of sell into these environments or that are these environments are now speaking to us to see how can we together create something? How can we together create something that actually helps that industry develop and continue? Which comes back to our tech for good mm. uh, discussion, which I know is one of your key motivators. But at the end of the day, investors, they want to make money. They want to no. save a return on what they're investing, so. Yeah, no, so the, and that's, that's absolutely fair. So I, I, I think what we, what we do is where we come into play, as I said before, is really taking a technology and kind of making that applicable to the market. Mm. So we have, we have a couple of solutions and products ready, which we're selling uh, you know, right now. We were here last year, and then we just spoke about an ID, if you want. Mm -hmm. it here was, at the summit. Yeah, here at the summit. Mm -hmm. Um, it was lovely, it was amazing, but it was all to be proven if you want. We had some proof of concepts, we had some demos, but we didn't have really working um, cases, user cases, and that we have a year down the line. Um, but um, So these things are, are, are running, um, they're, they're generating fees, as you're saying, they're making it more attractive for investors. Um, they're, they're there to show really there is a, a product service market fit. Our biggest challenge now is to, to build on that, to increase that. And um, I mean, this is obviously a long-term investment. Does mm -hmm. that, is that also sometimes a challenge that they're not gonna get their return in the short term? Um, yeah, maybe, but, but um, l listen, I think we have, a couple of, um, we have a couple of technologies that work right away, right? We, if, you know, if you look at our services portfolio, we have three big types. Um, as you know, Sue just explained the possibility of putting information onto light. So um, as we are showcasing here in the summit, um, it's, 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 it's very easy for us to, to put any kind of information onto an LED light. And we created some software because we do both hardware and software. We created some software, which is the easiest way to look at it is a bit of a hack. It kind of uses your camera of your phone mm. to read that tag um, and then basically translates that into some kind of content. Mm -hmm. um, think about anything that you want to make interactive, museums, theme parks, 
um, even your, your business environment, hotels, anything, that's ready to be deployed uh, uh, you know, right away. And for example, uh, we have used Li-Fi technology uh, to guide blind people inside the metro. Uh, mm. And so... In uh, Paris. Yeah, in Paris, yeah. We make an experiment and it works. Uh, what I want to say is that Li-Fi is a disruptive technology, it's clear. So it will take time, it's capital intensive mm -hmm. and it's risky. But you have investors that could support uh, this because generally the revenues, uh, the profit is high. So the question is, uh, in terms of time to, uh, to, to get back the investments, mm -hmm. but in term, concerning Li-Fi, you can create a lot of niche markets, in fact, not uh, mm -hmm. like, you know, the market we think, mass market, like every people will use its own smartphone to, to mm -hmm. connect to internet using Li-Fi. I think for this, we need to wait 5G, so 2020, 2022, or maybe 2025. So it could be okay. considered as a long term, but not so, not so much. But if you think about, as uh, Etan has said, Li-Fi inside museums, mm -hmm. Li-Fi inside the metro to help people, and so on and so on, you can develop a lot of niche market that could constitute finally a huge market. So, and in this case, the return of uh, investment are shorter. Mm -hmm. I hear you. And for, for the users, for the companies that, for example, if you think of the museum uh, that's using this technology, I mean, does it come with a hefty price tag? Or is it more or less what they are paying now for this kind of service, for their, for their bandwidth? Yeah, it's actually quite comparable. In some cases, just by using LED lights, you can obviously save them a lot of energy. It mm. does cost. Okay, so it is com yeah. comparable. So, so if they're using different uh, light sources that are... Great. And in the future, for me, for example, for using my smartphone and such, using this technology, am I going to see a higher phone bill or and, uh, power bill? Or no, is it going to translate to me or am I just winning? Uh, no, because obviously you, you're just going to, what you're doing is you're receiving and sending data the whole time. And so it's, it will mm -hmm. probably just fall within your data package. It doesn't really make a difference. Okay. Okay. So it won't be. It's just the yeah. way that the data is being Correct. transmitted. Yeah. Um, tell me why you decided to do this. Why? I mean, I realize you're a researcher and, and, and yeah, such, yeah. But, but why go this route? Um, the story is that uh, I'm using a lot of Wi-Fi at home. And once uh, my wife said, OK, I want to stop Wi-Fi at home because I have seen a show TV saying it's dangerous. So she, she switched off Wi-Fi. I said, no, it's not possible. No. I will prove you that radio waves are not dangerous. So I started to read all the scientific papers uh, um, saying that radio waves are dangerous in order to find arguments to prove to my wife that radio waves are not dangerous. And what I discovered is that it is dangerous. <laughs> so she said, find another way to communicate. You are a scientist. So, mm -hmm. And it was really the start of LED lighting. So this is why I said, oh, light is not dangerous. So we can replace Wi-Fi, radio waves by light. And so we started like this in mm -hmm. 2000. And it, then it, it just took off. Yeah. And, and in, in all this time, because we know this, this technology goes back to a, um, to Bell, right? Yeah, to Graham Bell. Exactly. Alexander yeah. Graham Bell. Yeah. Um, uh, and no one had taken it up again until now? No, because on the scale. radio waves are really dominant. And in fact, uh, it was nice. It works and so on. But f with 4G, radio waves uh, have started to be saturated. So mm. people are starting to think about how to increase these radio waves, band waves. The problem is that up to now, even for 3G, 4G, is it dangerous for us or not? Maybe, maybe not. The scientific com uh, community is looking for. Mm. But the problem is with 5G. As I told you, 5G, you need 10 times more antennas and 10 times more power, mm -hmm. radio waves power. So in this case, just to give you some numbers, in Switzerland, the limit in terms of radio waves is about 0.6 volt per meter. Okay. With 5G, we will be at 60 volt per meter. So Ten times. it's clear that it's a barrier. If we want sure. 5G, we need to find another way mm -hmm. to send information. This is why Li-Fi is at a strategic point to say, if we want 5G, we need another way. 
we need not to use radio waves, but uh, so light is perfect at this time. The timing, timing is yeah. right. Timing yeah. is right. Sometimes yeah. it's just yeah. all about this. But even if the timing is right, it took time. So why? <laughs> As, because you are not alone on the market. You need to, to, to educate your partners. You need mm -hmm. to train people and so on. So this is really common to all disruptive technologies. It takes time. Mm -hmm. But once again, that does not mean that you could not have a return of your investment on short term because as we talk, you can choose some niche market and start the business. This is what we are doing with Ellipse. And what are you, how much to finish up, how much more are you looking to raise? Where are you with your, with your fundraising, well, we, <laughs> so to speak? <laughs> we're, uh, we're raising right now. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely, I think you know, constantly as, as the projects kind of flow in. Um, just closed a, a raising round now with one of those strategic partners we were talking about to make uh, medical equipment um, IoT based and basically making the communication go through light. So and that's, yeah. who, who are these partners? Uh, this is a Japanese um, uh, manufacturer uh, called Saraya. Mm -hmm. They make, um, it's actually quite cool, they make a dispenser of the, what you basically do is you disinfect your hands. And in hospitals, one of the biggest problems apparently for moving hospital bacteria around, infecting patients, is obviously medical staff not being diligent enough. And so our life technology doesn't only allow us to communicate information back, it also says the quality of the um, of kind of the, 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 the washing station. Mm -hmm. So what's there, how much is there, what are the people coming, how long are they washing their hands for, are they doing a good job, all that kind of stuff. And do you find that the, to finish up this that tech for good, when it's yeah. technology that really impacts people's lives that we interpret for the better, um, is that easier to get money for? Um, or it doesn't matter. It just yeah, they, I think it doesn't investors matter. Investors still want their return, and it doesn't matter. You, you know, you know what I I think it really the, the tech for good kind of you know that slogan. I think it really works when it actually works. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we are focusing on. We're focusing on taking an ID um, that has proved itself and now really making it work for people. Uh, I'm not agree because I will talk as my investor uh, mm -hmm. part. So. We are, I'm managing a, a fund with, we are about now a network of 10, 10 or 11 uh, investment funds. And globally, we have 1 billion to invest. And what we are looking today is not only the return of our profit, how I will win, but also we really only choose technologies that has uh, impact, mm. uh, social impact, or as I tell for natural uh, environmental impact. So, and what I observe is that this community is growing. So a lot of investors now, they say, okay, if you have a good technology, but no societal or environmental impact, even if I can expect a high return, okay, I'm not so motivated. But if you can combine both, then I, I will invest. So. I think that it's a trend, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of uh, investors are starting to move from purely investing to investing with impact. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for, for joining us today, for sharing your story and your insights. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck.